so we are going to talk about discontinuities and rational functions today. Let's talk about some asymptotes. These asymptotes we've already talked about. We've talked about vertical asymptotes. We've found them. We've talked about horizontal asymptotes, especially when we talk about end behavior, right? When you go way out on the ends. Um, you can have multiple uh, vertical asymptotes, but you're only going to have one horizontal asymptote. Um, can you cross a horizontal asymptote? What do you think? What were you told? What, what is your understanding? No. Okay. And what about vertical asymptotes? No. But does this cross right here? Oh. It does, right? <laughs> it's okay. Um, because, because the understanding that you have up until now is that you can't. And it may have even been expressed to you that way because the, the ones that you were dealing with, they weren't going to cross. Okay. But you can't. Now, this one clearly just doesn't even relate to the horizontal asymptote at all. But even if it does, like this, my horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. So this is clearly just going to, well, as far as we know, stay on top and get closer and closer to zero. This one went down underneath it, but it comes back up. It's still approaching zero. For the end behavior, it's still what it's approaching, but it can cross. You can actually cross it an infinite amount of times. So if you have something like this, it's going to cross that. Your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. It's bouncing, and it's going to cross it an infinite amount of times. But at positive and negative infinity, your function is approaching zero, right? Your end behavior is still that it's approaching zero. So it's more about the ends and not so much about the middle. Remember that. Um, then we also have slant asymptotes, which is something that's usually talked about in Algebra 2, especially in pre-AP, but I don't think that y'all did. And it makes sense that that'd be one of the things that they would cut in the last couple of years just to try and get through the school year. Um, so we'll talk about them. They're not that big of a deal. And we'll talk about them a little bit more and what actually all this stuff means with it. We're just going to find them today. But we have a vertical one. And then you have a, so this is your slant asymptote. So it would be, it's also a line, just like your horizontal and vertical ones. But it's going to not just be y equals or x equals 0. And then so as we go, as x goes to negative infinity, your y value is approaching this line. It's not approaching a, you know, a number in, in, in theory there. All right, so, but you can also cross slant asymptotes. So, if, and this one's kind of hard to see, that's why I put another one on there, but this goes up, it crosses, and then it comes back down and it hugs it underneath right there. Like, I like this graph the best, but it's hard to see. Um, but then this one, it goes down underneath, but then it comes back up. So, it's still at the end, in behavior, that's what it's approaching there. Okay. And let's see, I had one more. Oh, there's other types of asymptotes. So we'll talk about slant. We're not going to talk about the next one, but I just want you to know that they exist. There's also parabolic asymptotes. So the blue part of this is the actual graph. <clears throat> the red part is a parabola, and that's your asymptote. So you can see as this, as x approaches infinity here, your y value is approaching a parabola and getting closer and closer to being that parabola. So I just wanted you to see that one. We're not actually going to find those. That's a little bit more advanced there. So let's look at our discontinuities, All right? Because we're going to graph, we graphed some reciprocal functions, but we're going to get into more of the just other rational functions that don't have parent functions. So most rational functions have restricted domains leading to discontinuities. So mo there, it is possible to have a rational that doesn't have a discontinuity, but most of the ones that we deal with will. And your types of discontinuities are vertical asymptotes, which we've already found together, horizontal asymptotes, which we've talked about a lot with in behavior, slant asymptotes, which will be new, but not that big of a deal, point discontinuities, which I know we've talked about the discontinuities before, whether or not you found the point discontinuity in Algebra 2. Um, Probably, but maybe not. I don't know how much time you spent on it, and it's fine. So we're going to start with that, with our point discontinuity, which also is just a hole, right? It could also be called removable discontinuity. And your slant asymptotes can also be called oblique asymptotes. Those will be the same thing. Okay. So to start with our point discontinuities, or our holes, in the graph occur when a factor, so like an x plus 2 or something, containing x is common to the numerator and denominator. So you have the same factor in the numerator and denominator, which means that we can actually cancel it out. So if we look at number 1, we have to factor to see what we've got here. Now, in the numerator, there's nothing to factor. And I know we wouldn't normally write it this way, but I want to write it this way so I can circle some things. x squared is the same as x times x. And then in the denominator, I can factor out a 3x, three, three and that leaves me with x minus 
2. Okay. So a factor that is common to the numerator and denominator would be one of those x's with that, right? So whatever the factor is, you set it equal to 0 to find the 0. So x equals 0 is just x equals 0. And I'm going to cancel that out. My reduced function is x over 3 times x minus 2. My point discontinuity is an ordered pair. It has an x value at whatever we solved here, so x is 0. And then whatever this x value is, this is your reduced function, you substitute it in here. So I need to find f of 0. So it's not always f of 0, it's f of whatever that is. So that's going to give me 0 over 3 times 0 minus 2, which just gives me 0. So my whole is at 0, 0. So what all that means is, in the end, when you graph it, that your graph looks like this. Graph looks like this. with a hole here. Okay. So you would go to 0, 0, put a hole, then you graph everything else kind of around it as we, when we learn how to graph that. What questions do you have? Awesome. All right, then let's look at number two. So I need to factor my numerator would be, I'd have, oh, I'm on the board. I'm going to have x and x, so that would be minus 3 and plus 2. And then my difference of squares, x minus 3 times x plus 3. Right. So this is my, I have a factor that's common to the numerator and denominator, which allows me to cancel it out. So that means that x, I said x minus 3 equal to 0, so I get x equals 3. Right. And it's fine. I, in your notes, I would say write it down so you know where it's coming from. I understand that you don't need to actually write all that down to figure it out. Like, you can look at them and know. But in your notes, it's not a bad idea to have it. So when you look back at it, you can, you know, place exactly where everything came from. So that means that my reduced function is x plus 2 over x plus 3. My point discontinuity has an x value of 3. And then to find the y value, I have to find f of 3 from my reduced one. If I do it from my original one, then I'm going to get 0 over 0, which is undefined. So you have to use the reduced one. So that's going to give me 3 plus 2 over 3 plus 3. So my y value is 5. There's my hole. What questions do you have? Anything? Easy enough? Did you find the holes before? Sure. Uh, did you? I, mean, I, think, I think you do. I'm pretty sure that's part of algebra too. All right. So then I need to factor this. So I'm going to get 2x times x minus 3 over 2x. So these cancel out. So that means that x equals 0, right? That's my point discontinuity. Point discontinuity, my x value is 0. My reduced function is just f of x equals x minus 3. So then I use this x value. I need f of 0, and that's going to give me negative 3. When I graph this function right here, what's it going to look like? It's linear. It's just going to be a line, right? So this is how you get a line with a hole in it from the original function over there. Okay. What questions do you have? You good? Awesome. So let's talk about vertical asymptotes, which I know we've talked about together before, and you knew them before you met me, but um, our vertical asymptotes, they occur when a factor, oh, goodness gracious, I need to stop getting so close. When a factor containing x is unique to the denominator. So the fact that it's unique is not something that we have talked about so far yet. Because when you look at number two, 
when you factor it right here, it looks like maybe we have two vertical asymptotes. But we don't because this factor isn't unique to the denominator because it matches up there and I cancel it out. So this is the only one that would be unique to the denominator. So we can't just look at the denominator. You have to look for point discontinuity first. So let's look at number one. First of all, there's nothing to factor. There's nothing to reduce. So your vertical asymptotes are just the zeros of the denominator. So x plus 2 equals 0. So x equals negative 2. So your vertical asymptote is just x equals negative 2. That is an equation of a line. You always write it as an equation. Right? Definitely know that because we've, we've done those. All right, so let's look at number 2. We're going to factor it. I can factor this into x plus 7 times x minus 7 all over x minus 7. Do I have a vertical asymptote as at x equals 7? What do I have when x is 7? A point discontinuity. So I can cancel those out. So even though I didn't ask before, we're going to write it down because we have to find them all eventually anyway. My point discontinuity happens when x equals 7. My reduced function is x plus 7. Do I have any vertical asymptotes at all? No. So my vertical asymptotes, I have none. What's the y value for my point discontinuity? 14. What questions you got? All right. You try number three. Any questions on number three? Check yourself. Good. Okay, okay. To find the point discontinuity, is that what you're asking? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so here, <laughs> this I would do x minus 4 equals 0. So x equals 4, that's this right here. This is what I substitute in here, not this one. Okay, does that make sense? That's a good question. Yes, always simplify everything. What else? Good questions. Anything else? All right, <clears throat> so let's look at number 4. Number 4 is already factored for me. That's great. Is there anything I can reduce? No. So how many vertical asymptotes do I have? Two. I have one at x equals 0 and another one at x equals what? Negative 5. Okay, so I just put this one on here to remind you that these are equations of lines. I'm not writing it as a set. It's not an ordered pair. <clears throat> They're equations of lines, and you can have more than one. You just list them out. Okay. Any questions at all? All right, let's talk horizontal asymptotes then. So horizontal asymptotes, they occur when the degree of the denominator is greater than or equal to the degree of the numerator in a rational function. Right? And you can have three things with rational functions. They can be top heavy, bottom heavy, or tied in degree. And that's when you're talking top heavy and bottom heavy, it has to do with the degree of the function in the numerator and denominator. So top heavy is greater degree in the numerator would indicate no horizontal asymptote, since it just said the um, denominator had to be greater than or equal to. So if the numerator is greater, so if you look here, I have a second degree over a first degree, so that's what makes it top heavy. 
So for your horizontal asymptote, you have none. Number two here, this is a third degree over a second degree that makes it top heavy. That's none for your horizontal asymptote. It's that easy. Something we need to know when we're graphing. Okay. So then if it is bottom heavy in degree, greater degree in the denominator, it's super easy. You just have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Don't have to do any work. So we look at number three. You have a first degree in the denominator. There's nothing in the numerator, so it's bottom heavy. So your horizontal asymptote is the line y equals zero. Here, you have a first degree over a second degree that makes it bottom heavy. So again, your horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. All right? If you want to keep those straight between top and bottom heavy, and which one has y equals zero? Bottom has two o's in it. So the one with more o's has the y equals zero. Maybe that can help you. I don't know. Figure something out so you can keep them straight. All right, then if they are tied in degree, that has, you still have a horizontal asymptote, y equals the ratio of the lead coefficients. So when we look at number five, this is a first degree over a first degree. So I look at the leading coefficients of two and five, and my horizontal asymptote is at y equals two fifths. Then number six, they again are tied in degree. I look at the leading coefficient, so my horizontal asymptote is at y equals what? One. And it's always an equation of a line. Everybody good? Okay, slant asymptotes, or another word for them are, is oblique asymptotes. Where are your oblique muscles? Right here. If you're working your abs, you can work your obliques. You know what your oblique muscles help you do? Lean over. Like slant, hence slant asymptotes. That's why they're called that. Oblique figures are the leaning figures. And these are why you call called your obliques. It's not a coincidence. All right, so um, slant asymptotes occur when the reduced rational, so you have to reduce it, which means you have to look for point discontinuities first, contains an x in the denominator the numerator is just one greater in degree. So remember when, we're, when it's top heavy, there's not, a, there's not a horizontal asymptote. But if it's top heavy by just one more, then we would have a slant asymptote. If it's top heavy by two more, that's when you have the parabolic and so forth, and we're not going to get into that. So, and then it's found by dividing the numerator by the denominator. So the first thing we have to do is factor to see if I can find any point discontinuities. So when I factor the numerator here, gives me x and x, and I'd have minus 1 and minus 3 all over x minus 2, which I don't need the parentheses, but I put them, whatever. Do I have any point discontinuity? No. And so that is my, I can't reduce it. And the numerator is one more in degree than the denominator is. And so in order for me to find my slant asymptote, I have to actually divide them, which means I no longer want this form. Like I had to do it to check for point discontinuity, but you want the form that's all multiplied out. This is why we did synthetic division and long division, right? Can I divide this by synthetic using synthetic division? Yes, this one's good for synthetic. So I think we would all agree that's probably the way we want to do it. So on the outside goes a 2. The inside, I have a 1, a negative 4, and a 3. And always look for missing terms, which I don't have any. So I bring down my 1, and that's 2, then that's negative 2, negative 4, negative 1. So if we were just straight up dividing, then um, I would have to use my remainder. If I was trying to evaluate at 2, then I would know my answer is negative 1. But I'm trying to find the equation of a line. I don't, if, if, it, if your remainder is zero, then you didn't divide out a point discontinuity. You should get a remainder every single time. But, and we'll talk more about why tomorrow, but um, you just ignore the remainder. And your answer for your slant asymptote is the equation of this line, y equals x minus 2. Okay, you just ignore the remainder. Yes, yeah, so it'll always be y equals. 
And since it's a slant, it'll always be a linear also. If you get anything that's not linear, something was wrong somewhere. Because it, that's, since it's only one greater, that's why you get linear every time. Okay. We okay on that? Any other questions at this point? All right. So let's look at number two. So I need to factor. So I'm going to factor out a 2x. That leaves me with x minus 2 over 2x. So do I have any point discontinuity? Yes. So I have point discontinuity. The x value for that is 0 because I'm going to cancel those out. My function then becomes x minus 2. So I put in there that you, you would have to. So yes, it was a rational function. But then our reduced rational function doesn't have an x in the denominator anymore. That's just the equation of a line. And so I'm not going to have a slant asymptote. Technically, the line is its own slant asymptote, but we won't get that far into it either. Um, my point discontinuity, what would my y value be? Negative 2. And then my slant asymptote would be none. Everybody OK with that? All right, so when I look at number three, I could, I could factor the numerator, but is there, if I factor the numerator, is there any way I'm going to get just a 2 or an x to cancel that out? No, so then I don't need to. Like, there's no reason for me to do it because there's not a GCF. So instead, I can just go ahead and divide because the numerator is 1 greater than the denominator. Can I use synthetic division? No, I can't. So I'm going to have to use a long division, and then I'm going to show you something a little different you could have done also, but we'll start with this. This gives me 2x squared minus 4x plus 3 in there. So 2x goes into 2x squared x times. Then I get 2x squared plus 4x. Change my signs. This gives me negative 8x plus 3. So then I get negative 4, negative 8x. What did I do wrong? I don't know. I was kind of wondering. I was like, something doesn't look right. I'm making stuff up. I don't know where I got 4x from. Let's just back up. I told y'all my brain is not firing on all cylinders today, and I apologize. I'm just making stuff up at this point. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's like literally all I get. I don't know. I don't know what I was doing. Uh, thank you for stopping me, though. So then I subtract those zero out. I bring down my negative 4x. Maybe I was thinking, I don't even know. I'm not even going to try and rationalize that. Um, then this is minus 2, so then negative 4x. And then I'm going to have a remainder, but again, I don't care about the remainder. So once I get my linear up here, I'm really done. My slant asymptote then is at y equals x minus 2. Okay. If you have a monomial in the denominator, you can do kind of a, a fraction type division. I don't know if it really has a name. But let me just ask you this. If I have <clears throat> one third or one fifth plus two fifths, right? Isn't that the same as one plus two over five? Right? That's what happens. So if this is if I can do this, then I could go backwards also, meaning I could split this fraction up. So I could make this two x squared over two x minus 4x over 2x plus 3 over 2x. Now, I'm not saying you would necessarily have to write it out like that, but if you kind of think about just dividing like that, that's what's happening here. When I reduce this, this reduces down to x. This reduces down to a negative 2. That's my remainder that I ignore. That is the equation of my line. So that only works when it's a monomial in the denominator. Don't be making up work. And it doesn't happen a ton, I don't think, in what we see. So you may not even think to do it. I just want to show you that there's other ways to kind of um, reduce things that way. But long division, if you do it correctly, unlike what I did, it's not that big of a deal to just do it that way either. All right. So let's look at number four. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, like, we would need to try and factor this. It's not going to factor. So um, we just we can't factor it. So since we can't factor it, and that means there's no point discontinuity, could I possibly have a slant asymptote? Is my degree of my numerator one more than the denominator? Yes, and that's how you determine that. So then I have to divide. Can I use synthetic division? No, I've got to use long division. So x squared plus 2x minus 1 
divide that into 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 9x minus 7. And I think at this point, y'all are better off dividing that on your own than me leading you through it, so knock yourself out. When you're done, check yourself with me. I don't know. That's the answer I got when I did it the first time, so I think I'm good. Any questions? Can you find these things? If we can find all these things, we can graph rationals real easily. And some of them are actually pretty cool, but you got to find all this stuff to, in order to be able to get there. All right, so if you don't have any questions for me, then go ahead and get started on your assignment, which is in Delta Math.